Welcome to Build a Lender podcast, devoted to educating you on a variety of financial subjects with an emphasis on real estate and real estate finance. Please click the button to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss an episode. Then like and share your favorite episodes. Hey, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Build a Lender podcast. I am your host, Build a Lender, and today I have our guest, Heather McChesney, with Keller Williams first. Heather, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you today? Awesome. Heather McChesney is a residential and luxury realtor at Homes with Heather with Keller Williams First Realty. She prides herself in putting in the time, working smart, and doing what is necessary to close a deal for her clients. For the past three years, Heather has regularly been a leader on the leaderboard as a top producing agent and sits on her local agent leadership council. Heather believes that her client's success in real estate does not just come from working with her alone. They succeed because she uses her vetted network of financial and real estate professionals to help them along the way. And today we're going to have a conversation very much about how we as professionals bring our area of expertise to somehow and some days Um, help our clients um, achieve difficult and overcome difficult situations, right? Specifically, you know, I was sharing um, my story a little bit um, when I uh, had to uh, consolidate my mother's affairs because she slipped and hit her head and just went through this period of time where she was not herself And um, I moved her to a home here in Colorado. And that whole process of dealing with the sale of her home and, uh, you know, I was in a different state. She lived in California at the time. And flying back and forth, I was in the middle of a divorce on top of that. So there was all of these emotional factors that really uh, were very, very difficult difficult to deal with. And, uh, you know, in those types of situations, a lot of times we think of death as sort of the the catalyst for us to settle on a state, but it's not always that now, is it? No, it's not just death. It's like the process of even downsizing or moving into assisted livings, independent living, going from home to something different. Yeah. So, you know, as real estate professionals, you know, sometimes we always are looking at it from the mortgage professionals view or the realtors view. When you have situations like this, because you work with, we both work with attorneys all the time because it's such a, a great avenue of, of referrals in business. Are there situations that you've dealt with recently where, you know, some of these dynamics have come into play? Let's talk about how these different dynamics can affect the transaction from your perspective? That's a great question. So a lot of times um, when we are working with those attorneys, they are doing a lot of the paperwork and the stuff behind the scenes that make it so that we're closing deals in the most safe way for our clients, right? And so, but then there's that, you touched on the emotional part and the difficulty or being from a different state that's also there. And that's where I step in. I step in as like the, the individual that will help the family go through these situations. Right. So if there's, um, I would prefer if it was before something big or bad has happened, but unfortunately we don't get to plan our next steps or what happens next. So, you know, whether it's moving into, like I said before, independent living, or in your case, moving into a state that's closer to home after a fall or an accident, that's where I come in to help the family and the individual with more of the emotional part and the day-to-day stuff that they need to do while the attorney is back here working on the paperwork to get it so that it's is a smooth closing, but then I'm there to kind of orchestrate the deadlines and 
filter the questions and communicate between professionals like yourself or the attorneys or the inspectors or the other agents and just kind of facilitate all of those little other pieces to help everyone in the transaction. Well, yeah, because there's so many moving parts to that. I know for me, it was like, I didn't know a, what I was really getting into. I mean, my mom had lived in that house for 35 years Mm -hmm. and I had just this overwhelming sense of, of dread a, because I had to clean out uh, and sell my, the house that I grew up in. So I'm like traumatized by not only moving, you know, moving my mentor because she's gone, even though she's still here, but then dealing with all of those affairs was way overwhelming. And I just remember like opening up closets and every single crevice was crammed with something. And that just felt like this overwhelming uh, sense of dread of half, what the heck am I going to do with all this stuff? Right? Right. So are there pieces that you have in your team to help facilitate some of these types of things? Talk about, talk about some of, the the estates where, you know, you maybe brought in, are there other professionals that you work with on a regular basis to help facilitate some of that? Yeah. So I actually have a great team behind me. And I, I, the example that I can give you is I had a home that um, both kids lived out of state. Father fell and broke his hip and he was in a nursing home here in the state What happened was, like you, the family came in, felt overwhelmed. Now what do we do with the house? What do we do with the stuff? What's important? What are the things that I can get money for? Because, you know, maybe maybe mom and dad are going to be in this caring transition for six months, three years. So we need to kind of think of their finances as well as protect our own as, as the heirs or the relatives. And so what had happened is they, they brought in myself and my team, and I have a team that I've partnered up with. Her name um, specifically is Andrea Robbins with Caring Transitions of Northern Colorado. Um, she focuses on Northern North Denver, Longmont, Boulder, um, and there's other teams around. And we brought her in and her and I partnered together. So I'm helping on the home sale part, but she's also helping on kind of like you said, the overwhelming, oh my gosh, all the stuff. What do I do with the um, the family photos? But what if I miss something? So this team comes in, they can either sell collections, they can do online auctions in the home estate sales. We've seen those when we drive around. Um, or they can just do a clean out because sometimes some families have actually like walked already in and gone through and they've taken what they want because they don't necessarily want 35 years. Like you said, 35 years of accumulated stuff from mom and dad's house. They don't want that. And so they've done a great job of already taking stuff out and it might not have a lot of financial gain. It would be cheaper for the family just to do a move out clean. And, um, you know, that's what I've done in the past. It's, it's worked out great because you only have to interview one person and now you have a team of professionals behind them. So you interview me, you have this team behind me that comes in and does all of that. But then her and I work closely together to say, Hey, yeah, it might be a good idea to leave the washer and dryer. Hey, don't forget to leave the fireplace, um, attachments, those kind of things so that her and I can communicate together. And then both of the family members on this particular house I was talking about, they didn't come back to Colorado because they didn't need to, because we relieved that overwhelming stress and that big task at hand. Well, that's huge. And, you know, I think you bring up another point there too. Um, For me, I mean, there is a ton of deferred maintenance. And I think as people inherit these properties, you know, a lot of times it's an elder parent, they're on a fixed income. And they are leaving some items for another day, you know, or to be dealt with once they pass. And that's just what it is. So do you have also a team of folks that are coming in and assessing the, um, the, uh, habitability or the condition of the property as well? 
So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the property and make sure because I'm in this market, right? This is my expertise is this area. So I'm going to look at the property. I know what buyers are looking for and what they're not looking for and things that are going to be of concern in inspection objections. Um, sometimes it's about the bottom dollar, right? So if, if we're looking at getting the most money, maybe putting a little bit of money into it. And that's when then I bring in the professionals that'll help me go through and they'll come up with like a punch list. So I have contractors that'll do punch list of, um, gotta fix this, gotta return or, uh, replace the light bulbs, those easy things that may cost a little money at the beginning, but then the return is huge. So if it's the bottom dollar that we're looking at, then we'll bring in those professionals. But if it's about timing, we need to get it done quickly because unfortunately there's been times where family members don't make it those three weeks or those four weeks or, you know, the, the eight to 10 months that we were hoping they would, and they've passed away. Now it's about getting the transaction done as quickly as possible, doing those extra deferred items that have been on the honey do list for years is not worth it. Now it's just about getting it on the market and presenting it in such a way so that people are still coming in and not feeling like it's just a sad house that's not ready to be lived in, but actually envisioning themselves in there. So in that case, it sounds like what I hear you saying is that you're going to price that appropriately as opposed to fixing some of the, the items then, right? Yeah. And it really depends on the clients and their situation. Everybody is so unique and every situation is going to be unique. So sometimes putting the $5,000 into it right now and getting those deferred maintenance things finished will get you that $15,000 extra. And that'll help mom and dad, our older generation, live longer in their retirement community. Or maybe it's just get them through it so that we can get the whole house sold and uh, make it so that it's not so much of a headache from weeks on the online or weeks at a time. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, it, and it, what's really funny is I feel like a family sort of resist um, some of these types of conversations. I, I have attorneys on the show and a couple of estate planners. And one of the things that we talk about is just, you know, the subject of death is not really everybody's favorite topic. Uh, and Ever? that there is such a huge portion of the population that doesn't have a will. They don't have, you know, and then that's just a will, let alone like a trust or anything else to protect these assets and pass them along in a functional way. So when you sit down with your clients, do you have any sort of preemptive conversations with them as they expand their real estate portfolio, they're moving up, they're moving down, they're making different decisions, they're adding kids and family members. What uh, what are some practical conversations that we should be having with uh, you as an advisor to sort of avoid some of these pitfalls um, with aging parents? What are your thoughts there? I think it's really important for us to be proactive as opposed to reactive, right? A lot of times the bigger overwhelming feelings are because we're reacting to a situation that has happened as opposed to already having that conversation. So when I'm sitting down with clients or with people that are questioning what to do with their older family members or whatever that is, is let's be proactive and start talking to the estate attorneys right now. Because let's spend a little bit of time with these estate attorneys to create the, the right goals that we all set or want to set instead of after the fact, if you've passed or now you have become that you cannot make these decisions, now we're in probate. I mean, the attorneys, yes, they make a lot more money when we go through probate, but it's a lot more of a headache. The word overwhelm is there. The, the, um, family that comes out of the woodwork is another one of those conversations that we have too. Family comes out, everybody has their own opinions. Let's go ahead and set up the expectations and the, uh, the plan in place ahead of time and not spend as much money than our family and our estate will after the Yeah, because Colorado takes their share when you don't do it right, right? And, and, and uh, I had one attorney, Dan Capsack, who is a local attorney here, 
uh, shout out to him, uh, has said, you know, by not making a plan, you've already planned. You know, by not having a plan, you're making your plan. And uh, he brings up a good point. You know, if you're going to leave that for another day, and a lot of times, you know, everybody thinks of death, but you could step off the curb, get hit by a car by no intention or fault of your own and be incapacitated. And if you don't have anything in place, even if you do have something in place, but it doesn't deal with being in incapacitated and not having the decision-making ability, you are still setting yourself up to have some significant issues resolving or liquidating or pulling the assets that you need to care for you now in a vegetated state. And that's what people don't recognize. So I think it's really, really important. Uh, and I know, you know, we sit down for, you know, I sit down for an annual mortgage review. I'm sure you do an annual real estate review to sort of show people how much, you know, in, in the last five years, it's such a great conversation to have because it's like, oh my God, hey, you got another 12, 14, 22% this year, you know, uh, in appreciation in your home. But a lot of times we're not just taking that extra step to ask them if they have a will um, or if they have aging parents that they may need to be thinking about. Um, and if you have aging parents, let's just take one of those scenarios for some, you know, another one of the transactions that you've recently work, worked on. Uh, do you often find that people are well prepared or is it something that you're helping them that's prepare a really, for? That's a deep question because people feel prepared, but I think also they fall into the victim of the quick and easy plan, I guess is what, the, what I want to call it is that they, called the 1-800 number, they spent a little bit of money and they made a plan. They thought they were protected, but they didn't have the right professionals looking over the plan. And then we get to, hey, we've got a contract on the house. We pull title and all of a sudden we can't sell this house as is. Now we're reacting to the problem and hiring another attorney to actually go through and rechange everything that we thought we had a plan on. So I really think that in this situation, um, specifically on a house that I had, you know, cheaper is not always better. The quick and easy button, there is no quick and easy button. It's about working with the right people at the right time and under, like having the education too of, okay, this is what you're educating on the plan, but you're also being educated on the legalities of it. So making mm -hmm. sure that both parties are educated so that you know what you're signing. So you're not having to, whoops, I made a mistake. We don't want that. We want to be able to continue going forward and not have yeah. to worry about it. So I, I do think that there is no easy button in this, but there are the right people at the right time for clients. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really a challenge if uh, you think you have a plan and it, it becomes not a plan. And now you're changing. Well, right. So what I hear, what I, what I hear you saying is don't go with the budget uh, solution. Right. Uh, my father has some uh, software that he loves to use to come up with wills and stuff. And we did one for me just so that we had something that was covered. And, but I was like, you know, it's time to now, I, you know, I'm myself and getting, engaged and we're expanding the family. And those are the times when you actually now need to make changes. Uh, you know, you need to make different designations. You need to, uh, you know, make sure that uh, you have the proper people listed. Uh, and most folks are taking the time, A, to even have that conversation about what is it that we really need to protect ourselves and then um, they're not revisiting it. They think it's sort of a one and done type of a deal. And you, what you're saying is, you know, it's great to be proactive and take a look at, you know, hey, mom doesn't need to leave right now. She 
is still wanting to live in the home and can live in the, on, on the home and support herself by herself for herself right now. But that doesn't mean that it's not right now. It's not a great opportunity to say, okay, so what do you want? Right. What do you want? What do you need? And, and how are we going to handle this in the, in the family? And that is another big thing. You mentioned um, siblings sort of coming out of the woodwork to to lay claim to real estate. How often does that uh, cause problems for you on, on the sales side? Oh, my gosh. I was actually just dealing with that this morning because, you know, uh, family members feel that they're going to get some kind of gain, a financial gain from a sale of a property or sale of individual things in that property, right? So depending on where they are at in financial, um, in their financial plan, they might be desperate. So even negotiating small items on an inspection objection become a big deal because they feel that they need more money. And they might not notice that right away, or they definitely not going to say that to the seller, but the seller becomes overwhelmed now by the family inserting their opinion on the transaction at hand. But she's looked at for the, in this case, she's looking at me as the um, expert, and I'm telling her the options that she has, but I'm reminding her that they are her options because she has set up the plan that it is her home. It's in her name. She gets to make those decisions, but say something happened to her, you know, a couple weeks ago, we would be in a whole different conversation because now the family members do get to have a say, you know, if, if she is incapacitated, they might, but she doesn't have a plan in place. So now we would be in probate and working with more attorneys. It becomes more expensive for the entirety of the family. So for her, it's really important that she has everything lined out in what to do next and who makes the decisions. So that way you only have one person making decisions. If you have three kids, you have one person making those financial decisions and one person making the medical decisions. And you have individuals making those decisions for you. It's just, they, they do, they come out of the woodwork and it's their own desperation and, and a lot of times their own personal wants and needs that go up the, 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 my client at this point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. it, it's intense. It's intense. So, um, what from your, let's talk a little bit about, uh, the market right now because the market has changed and let's say. Um, if somebody, what would, would be some advice that you would give someone who was, you know, in the situation, let's say they're listing their house for sale because they're downsizing or they they need the proceeds of that because maybe they don't have long-term care insurance to then liquidate the real estate so that they can go now live in a home. Um, how would you advise them in that situation um, on uh, market pricing this time around with this particular market? This market is uh, crazy. We're just going to say that. But what's great about it is it's still the area and the location that people are buying into. So it's still a, a great place for people to come to. So people can still sell and sell their house at a great value. So what I want to do is I want to come into the home to the client and I want to go over those the, the next steps. And it might be, hey, let's go ahead and put the $5,000. Let's hire um, one of my contractors to come in to help you get some of these items done. Because I think right now there's enough inventory that we need to kind of stand out from the rest of the houses on the market. So it might be, let's get somebody in here to do some maintenance. Let's get Andrea out here to do um, the clean out. Even if it's just to move some of the stuff that's that needs to be go, like gone through with the family into storage, let's get the house cleaned out so that buyers can env envision themselves in the home and see their future in the home instead of my seller's future in their home. So right now, it's so important to have those hard conversations with the sellers to make sure that they know and they're ready, but then also set the expectation that time is going to be a little bit longer right now. 
we're getting closer to the holidays, you know, October is right around the corner. And then we have the holidays. We don't have as many buyers in the market. And with the interest rates going up, buyers can actually, the ones that have to buy right now are going to be a little bit more picky. So we need to put the best foot forward so that it looks great and buyers are coming in. Yeah, and we're, you know, we're seeing more incentives and in helping price out more incentives to help actually sellers keep more of their margin because the initial knee-jerk reaction, I think, is a little bit of panic that people are dropping their prices. When they see price drops, the natural reaction is, oh, I better drop the price of my house so that I can sell it fast if I'm not getting the showings or whatever. And we're we're talking to a lot of folks about uh, paying for uh, – the consumer's closing costs to buy down the rate. So it makes it more affordable. And when you actually run the numbers there, it's certainly more affordable and has a bigger impact to price than a price drop. So the yeah, price drop, you're going to do percentages of the price. And that's a huge amount for a seller, but you don't need that much more for a buyer to get that seller concession to pay down the rate. And then buyers actually make more money in the long run from it than saving a few thousand dollars on the entirety of the loan. The other thing is, is just pricing it right to the where mm -hmm. the market is and not where you want your house to be priced at. So if we price it right, we don't have to lower the price. Then we can offer those kind of smaller incentives so that buyers are excited, but we're not waiting for a long time to be sold and closed. Cool. Well, this has been a great conversation, Heather. I love uh, having uh, spent time with you and having you on the show. What are some ways that uh, if somebody wants more information or they want to, uh, you know, they have a, had the conversations with their family and they need to reach out to you for your expertise, how would they, what's the best way to reach you? The best way to reach me is through email. My email address is heather.mcchesney at kw.com. I am local, I'm native, so I've been around for a long time. And if you need any help, I'm happy to to help at least guide into the next plan and be a part of your plan. Cool. Well, very awesome. Well, this has been another episode of Build a Lender Podcast where we talk about all things financial services financial services related, easy for me to say, and how it affects your real estate and real estate finance. Until next time. I'm Bill Rodriguez, Bill the Lender. Talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to Bill the Lender Podcast. Please reach out to me with any questions at 303-877-6323.